Hey guys, welcome back. It's part two of 100 with Auntie. You know, we were trying to get into Keita's take on how she knew Auntie and how she, you know, got cool and everything, but, you know, technical difficulties happen. But we're here. What's up, Auntie? What's up? Now, Keita, talk about your six or however many. Don't years. count my time. Reclaiming my time. Don't count my time. <laughs> I understand because you know I'm on like 36. So, OMG. Okay, I'm okay. I'm done. So, I was introduced to Auntie by because I was married to her nephew, which is also my cousin. Yeah, her cousin. <laughs> <laughs> Who was her? <laughs> We can't make this Miss up. This B <laughs> so yeah, we um me and Auntie moved here around the same time. Transitioned to Georgia around the same time. That was in like two thousand six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when I was living there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I got I I got married two thousand seven. Mm-hmm. I was still there, yeah. but I I yeah. Yeah. Um <laughs> 2007. <laughs> um, so yeah, and we were always like, it was like real, like at that time, it was like, I want to say we all got together for family dinners, Sunday dinners, we wanted to drink, we drank. Um, family fun. So the family, like we would go to the racetrack, like we did so much in that time, going to the racetrack, that's why, you know. Family reunion. I, um, yeah, shoot! Mm-hmm. I feel like we had family reunions every other <laughs> every other month. Who was right, and chilling? I, I think I moved back to uh, New York then, so I was missing everything. I just had to get play by play by Keita. Right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, then you know I, I ended up getting divorced, and you know I'm still in the family. <laughs> I mean, and always will be. And always I mean, will be. Until I don't like her no more, but you go ahead. This ain't got nothing to do. It's bigger than you, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than you. Okay, she, she, bigger than, she, she all on that. Bigger than you and, and bag me. Of shit. <laughs> <laughs> What's a family member? Always a family member, no matter what you happens in a relationship. Hey. Okay. You see Auntie over here. Let's you go. You feel me? That's how it goes. So. That's, That's the, the dynamic of the family. So how yeah. long, Kitty, you been divorced? I couldn't family if I wanted to, so. Right, right, right. Hello. Because I'm still going to call your phone. Let, let you change your number. How am I going to find it? Let, let, let you change your number. <laughs> let, let, go on. Go on, try. Oh, I'm going to track you down now. I don't want to get out of the family. Okay. Good. I only remain in the family for my You don't have a choice. Nephews. Okay, you're right. You're right. So. You're you right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She, look. She the only auntie that call everybody by their first uh they well not they first their name, middle name know. right yeah. don't don't shout mine out because then they gonna know my government oh I was getting ready <laughs> yeah don't do it don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't put nothing out there I'm like no y'all can't know nothing Mm-mm. <laughs> so yeah she call everyone all her niece and nephew by middle name okay. mm-hmm. so you, you better that's be somebody ready. know when I'm talking to them right. I think she only calls my first name when she upset. No, then I call the whole name. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I ain't been on that side of the look. I ain't been mm-hmm. too, too many times. Maybe about two, three in my whole lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> but, Keita, how long you been divorced? Since two thousand April April 27, 2012 at 11.30 p.m. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> so how long is that? How many years? What's that? Five, six... What's it? Huh? Seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eight. nine, ten. How old is Kamari? Nine that's years. Your kid. Look, that's your kid. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to the age. I don't know. I don't know your age. I'm look, sorry. How old is you again? When's your birthday? What year again? Okay. Child. Okay. Nine years. Nine. Okay. I'm sure. How long you been divorced? Oh my gosh. Um. So been divorced nine. I've I've been divorced about fifteen years. Woo! Loving it. Ow. Like I still occasionally have um just got divorced, I'm free as a bird parties. Mm. You wait. 
Free as a bird party. Yeah, free as a bird. Okay. When I got divorced. Look. Celebrate. My divorce. <laughs> What's that brown sugar? <laughs> yeah. um, so, mm-hmm. so for you, was it rough going through that divorce? Or was it kind of like, you know what, we both came to the same, you know, thing, like we're at that same state, like, you know what, we just gonna part. Going through the divorce was not rough. Okay. Experiencing the reason for the divorce. Got it. Okay, 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 okay. Um, But, you know, I knew that it was the best thing for me. Mm-hmm. And from, I mean, the, the minute, you know, papers were signed, it was like, you know, like a whole burden lifted off of me. Gotcha, um, gotcha. You know, like I said, going through the reason that we got divorced was kind of rough, but it actually helped me to, um, it, it was a part of molding me into who I am and how today. I am today. Okay. So, you know, I have no regrets. You know, I feel and have always felt everything happens when it happens, why it happens for a reason. So I also believe that people are in your life for a season, no matter what capacity they are in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, you better preach on. So, I mean, we, we get married and we, we, you know, we feel we're marrying the love of our life and it's going to be forever. Sometimes it works out like that and sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that instead of being bitter behind mm-hmm. it, you know what I mean? I just took my lessons from it, you know, That's literally, it. and That's moved it. on. Right. Um, and um, I can actually say I thank God, <laughs> you mm. know, really, because mm-hmm. I think that I would not be who I am and where I am today if I were still married. Oh, okay. So do you feel like you weren't fully like 100 you or you mean like being bold and being about you doing you? I've always been pretty bold. Mm -hmm. I've always to an extent been who I am. Mm -hmm. Um, But because of tradition, Right. Um, traditions being taught by my mom, you know, mm. there's certain things that, you know, we are taught as women that, oh, baby, you know, that that's okay. You know, you, when you have children together, you have to just make it work, make it right. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I did try that, you know, for a while, but then, right. you know, I was like, you know what? It, I'm living a lie in doing that. Mm. And then you're living that lie, not only within yourself, but your children as well. Right. So I felt that it was unhealthy, you know, to continue on like that, you know, mm-hmm. because kids, people think that children don't, don't absorb and see right. everything that's going on and they will remember even better than you, you know, mm. so, you know, and I, I didn't want that. Right. So, you know, I was like, it's better to just part ways and, you know, just be friends or not. Um, Right. Whichever way it rolls out, you know, if we could remain good friends, you know, well, no, I take that back. Not good friends. Mm -hmm. Cordial. Yeah. When it pertains to one of my kids. Right. Pertains to children and. Right. There's no talk. Yeah. So, like, do you feel like you were angry at one point, like, where you had to get over certain things before y'all can kind of, like, still have that open communication? No. Okay. That's good. Yeah, because I, I know really some people. Hmm? I really don't do angry. I don't do angry. I, I don't, don't think I've ever seen you upset. <laughs> yeah, I just don't. It's a waste of energy for me. And, um... You know, I can't even really say I've ever been like really stressed out to the point of where it's like, you know, I just, you know, needed to do, have a wusa, um, right. break away from everyone. Mm. I do do that, but it's not due to stress. It's just because it, it's how I am. You know? Right. Um, I enjoy time, you know, with myself. Mm-hmm. 
hours and, and, you know, I like to just do me. So I've always been kind of a loner. So yeah, it never angered me, you know? Right. I can kind of say it was, by the time we got to the point of divorce, it, I was ready for it. Like, come on, okay. come on, come on. Come get on. the papers ready, get the papers. You know, give, give me the pen, you know. So <laughs> it, it became, it was a good thing for me. By that so yeah, even with the kids, like I never looked back. I never thought for one moment that, you know, or, or never thought, how am I going to do this? How am right. I gonna, how am I going to do? How am I going to? Provide. You know, yeah. God bless me with talent. And I've always worked, even from high mm. school. So if I have to work two jobs to make ends, ends meet, meet. do what it do, you know, it's what I did. She did that. What I did, so. And always kept a fly house. Can't y'all see the background? <laughs> Look. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's that's what's up. And now you guys are in like the greatest point, right? Like the greatest time. Like it's nothing. You see each other, you're like, hey, what up? Sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it really depends. You know, yeah. sometimes we see each other and I, I don't talk to me. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. actually more than not, you know. Mm-hmm. That's good, yeah. I don't mind conversation. But it depends on what the conversation or where one may be going with the conversation. So I see what you're saying. You know, hand up. Off, Boundaries. Get mm-hmm. my bag. You know, whatever. Right. That, that's a- <laughs> <laughs> Look, did I tell y'all? Ooh, I told you 100. I'm what? Like, I'm not go to jail over that. A shotgun. A shotgun. I'm going to jail over that. So I, I'm here for my kids. So. Mm-hmm. I can do minimal damage, you know, break a leg, a kneecap. Break a leg. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like that. So I mean, like that's 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 good. Cause you know, me looking at you know on the outside because I haven't been in a long relationship or, you know, married or anything. That's why I'm like looking at both you and Keita, like, you know, what your experiences were like, you know, how did it change you? to be better you know did it ever break you down to where you didn't even know who you were you know in the relationship in the marriage never not for me never Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good that's good that I was probably like when I was married I never wore you know makeup I never really would dress um sexy like wear Mm. skirts or shorts and stuff like that again I think that stemmed from traditions that my mother taught me you know how you you know dress and stuff like that and right um, you know I didn't dress like an old lady either right um there was there's so much more of me out now than it was when I was married yeah. yeah. Because I was afraid or mm. anything like that. I just, like I said, was taught that when you're married, you know, it's this, that, and and the other. You know, right. You're single. It's hey, ball game. You know, for me, and um, it's, it's been great. I know that's right. What's your side, Kita? <laughs> Were you angry for a while? Were you angry for a while? Did you hide? You know, did you lose yourself going through the relationship? Um, for one, when I got married, right when I was when I got married, I didn't know who I didn't know myself Mm. going into marriage, and it wasn't um, it wasn't more so of. It wasn't more so of me being in a relationship with somebody. It was just that for me, I didn't know who I was. Mm. And I was struggling to find out who I was and what I wanted at that time. So he was your life. At that time. Mm -hmm. So as the marriage went on, I started, I guess I started, I guess internal me started trying to come out and I'm like, yo, what? What, what is this? What's what's going on? Okay, mm-hmm. so like uh, Cheryl, when when it came down to it was getting a divorce, 
and he showed up with papers. I was like, yo, hmm. can I sign right now? You ready? <laughs> you ready to go? I'm right. He was like, what are you doing? You got to get it. <laughs> you, it don't work that way. Oh, you popping up with these papers. I'm ready to sign. Hey. I'm ready to give you hey. what you want, player. Let's go. Mm, mm, mm. Um, so angry? No, but I had things that I, I had things in me that I had to let him know because I mm. didn't want that to be stuck with me saying I wish I would have said and not say not in a sense of oh this is what I need to say to get him back. No, it's what I needed to release so that okay. I can be released. Mm. And I wouldn't be having a whole bunch of I, like on Cheryl said be bitter about things as I go on and move on to the next journey of my life. Mm. I didn't want to be like that. So I was like, I don't care if I was at work and something popped up and they got me mad. Oh, yo, I need, I need to talk to you. Hmm. That's what we need to talk about right now. I ain't trying to hear that word. You're going to listen. I'm sorry. Cause hmm. it's coming out today. I'm sorry. We're not, we're not doing that. So mm-hmm. I did that for about a good month after we, um, no matter of fact, this is what, matter of fact, we weren't even divorced yet. I did this during separation time after mm. he moved out. So I was getting my stuff in before the divorce even hit. And I was like, yo, this was this, this, that, no, you, and, and as I did that, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't like I was trying to be toxic. I was just trying to get it out because I never got my voice out. And I never, yeah. yeah. Here's and that. if you didn't, it would have become toxic in you. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it wasn't like, it was just like, I need you to listen to me. I need you to hear what I'm saying. I need you to understand what I, I need you to look at me. Look at what I'm saying. Not mm-hmm. for me to get you back, but listen. Because maybe it'll help you. And you're not. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, maybe it could, maybe it won't. I, I don't know, but whatever. So um, that happened. And then when it came down to divorce, when it came down to divorce, it was. It was um, it was good. Mm. Even at the court, the judge was like, "Y'all getting divorced, but y'all standing right beside each other. That's fine." Because mm. you had already gotten everything else out, so by that time, it was like, you know, a relief. Right. She on me because she going. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, but, y'all, kids. But yeah, so um, what you would say, Asher? I'm sorry. I said because by the time you got to court, you know, you had already gotten everything out, you know, of you. Right. So it's relief at that point. Right. So, um, you know, and I remember because it was like we went to court and I was like, y'all hungry. He was like, sure, I'm hungry too. Hey, let's go to IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> and from that time and from that moment, because we already we already discussed what we wanted, right? Mm-hmm. How the divorce should go and what should we do with our, with our, with our son. Mm-hmm. That was the foundation. Mm-hmm. As long as we knew, okay, this is how we're going to conduct ourselves because of him, we're good. We don't. Mm-hmm. I don't care what you got going on, who you talking to, who come in your life. You can have five, six, seven of them. I don't care. Mm-hmm. As long as they know. What this foundation is, 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 is we said, and mm-hmm. it's not disrespected. I don't care. I'm not mm-hmm. gonna disrespect what you got going on, and you're not gonna disrespect what I got going on. Right. Setting the so, boundaries, yeah. Co-parenting that that helped co-parenting. Right. You see what I'm saying? That I did not have, and still don't have. But, right. Mm-hmm. You know, it was. I had my family. My family was like my support system. You know, and okay. still. Um, when I need support, it's always from any and everyone, but Mm -hmm. the main person that should, right. Yeah. So, um, that part was a little bit rough because it all came out like any type of feelings, um, from the children would come out at me because it was no one else to Mm -hmm. outlet. So I had to learn how to let them speak what they felt, you know, right. allow them to feel that way, you know, but, you know, with, with, with arms around at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, how to still see the love, even though we're not together anymore. Mm-hmm. 
mommy, I still, you know, was there and am still there and will always be there, you know, as, as long and, and for anything that I can be there for. Mm -hmm. um, that was the main thing for me because once we separated, there was no, there was no, well, let's do this, you know, for the kids like, you know, um, Kita had. So, um, I can't really say it was a struggle because I had family support. So that really wasn't a struggle either. Right. It was just hard um, to handle it, to handle, you know, how they felt, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't you know, what to do, how to soothe them. Mm -hmm. yeah, I was already soothed. But right. Then I think about them and put them in the forefront, you know, and I still do that today. Right. In the forefront. In, in relationships or any relationship that I have been in since then. Okay. You know, my kids are in the forefront. Right, right, right. In the forefront than the kids. Mm -hmm. but, so, Kita, how did that shape you into who you are today? How, what would you say, going into a relationship today, how are you different? What things might you look for or, um, or not look for? And I'll get interviewed. Um, I'm definitely, and that is so 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 funny. You should say that, um, because I feel like this week, honestly, this week I have been bat I have been battling with self awareness, mm -hmm. and um, I I said I was going to listen listen to my discernment more mm -hmm. because my discernment be, is on point. But I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. and I go against what I'm, what my discernment is telling me, mm -hmm. and what I am about certain people in certain situations. So that one would definitely go. I'm gonna start doing that more. Um, um, as far as being, as far as relationship, at, at this point, it's like I want one, and I'm, I'm really not really concerned of having one at this point. Like, I, I, of course, I'm human, and you that's something you want. That's something we all like, oh, dang, I wish I had somebody right now. But I'm, I'm doing some growing right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't want nobody to stunt what I'm doing, what, what the journey I'm, I'm taking right now. Okay. I don't want yeah. them to be a distraction of what I'm, of where I'm going in life. And if they, if they're the person that's, that's supposed to be there to help me continue to grow, then that's okay. And that's, that's mm -hmm. that would happen. But if not, then I can't. I can't have them around. Right. And you also trying to be make sure you're ready, you know, to be yeah. in something. Like make sure you got your stuff together because you know bringing baggage in, you know, not necessarily bad stuff, but just stuff that you're trying to work on in your own life. You want to make yeah. sure you like close to. Because the other day, I swear I was just um thinking like I mean I was literally having this battle. I was, I really thought I was going crazy. I am crazy, but I thought I was really going crazy. So I was having this battle with myself. I had, and I always, it, it may, this may sound harsh, but I say, okay, I have this masculine side and I got yeah, this she feminine said that. side. But my masculine side takes over more than my feminine side, but my feminine side is pushing in and I'm like, yo, this is feel uncomfortable. What's happening? I don't like this. And usually I'm able to like push it away. But now it's like, no, you need to balance right now. You just be trying to be hard. I don't try to be hard, but it's just like once, when, because I'm in this, I'm here by myself. Like I, my family's not here, so it's like I have to take control of, every, of my of everything I do. So if somebody can't come in and I don't feel like you can take lead, I don't, want, I don't want it to do with you. No, you see what I'm saying. So right now it's like I'm trying to listen to my feminine side more. Like if somebody comes your come in your life. You gotta relax. Mm. Allow them to to lead if that's what they if that's what they can do, and that's my struggle. I don't know how to let somebody else lead. I do. It depends. Now I can I can identify an alpha person when they come up. I'll shut all the way down. That's how you know. Right. But if you ain't no alpha, is I'm it sorry. the uniform? I'm sorry. No, it's not even the uniform. It's just their spirit. If this if that if I could feel that alpha spirit coming. You'll mm -hmm. see how I shut down. I'd be like, ooh. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to worry about me. Mm -hmm. Shut up. 
be talking again? I have to say that my journey, not really my journey, but the things that I went through during the process of um, divorce and even after that, it, it kind of made me, like he just says, you got your, your masculine side and your, your feminine side. I would definitely say it made me more like a dude in the sense of, you know, I don't, I don't do like one, two, three strikes, you're out. There's only one. Ooh. You're out, period. Once we're done, we're done. Your number is deleted, you know, um, but I have not had to do that. Well, one time. Yeah. Um, and I do like to have control, but I don't have to be in control of the relationship. That part. So to speak. I'm in control of me. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, as long as I remain in control of me, not so much as having a guard up because I'm, I'm a compromiser. I am a lover. I don't use my past experience experiences to govern my mm-hmm. future experiences you know what I mean so but I won't be controlled right so you know I have been you know in a couple of um relationships so well, actually all of them men are just so controlling you know I called you at like three o'clock you know it's it's six o'clock and you just we, oh, we're gonna have to run into part three and a few seconds is gonna cut us out so maybe let it cut us out okay yeah um you know i i don't like that i let the man be the man i don't have any problems with that you know Mm. what and i don't have to always be right i know how to apologize when i'm wrong i don't have a problem with that but i i don't do clingy i don't do possessive I don't want to spend every day. Now, when we are married, and if your mind.